Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. With Nigeria's adoption of the idea of a single African market, the conversation is on about the need for the country to be adequately positioned to cut the best deal possible for her people. For one, there have been calls for closer cooperation between the public and private sectors as a way of easily achieving the desired objective. In a brief minute, we'll be talking to Ayo Teriba, an economist and chief executive officer of Economic Associates, who will be taking a look at this issue, as well as related issues, including the wait for President Buhari's cabinet and what needs to be done to reform the NNPC with a new helmsman in place. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, sir. Much. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Well, good to see you again, nice uh, Ayotel, for quite Thank a long time. Thank you very much. Now, on Sunday, the president, uh, Mohamed Buhari, uh, was in Niamey, Niger, where you know, he signed the uh, African Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement uh, to the relief of many uh, who had been disturbed that Nigeria uh, was not taking the uh, driver's seat. This all-important African Agenda 2063 uh, initiative. Uh, what's your take? Uh, what does Nigeria stand to gain? Uh, and do you think we are prepared? And I ask this question in the light of an editorial on the 7th July uh, in the East African, which is a Kenya newspaper. You know, the, the editorial says uh, that the uh, African Continental Free Trade Agreement has taken off, but it may suffer the pull of gravity. And the argument in that editorial is that many African states, yes, they are enthusiastic, but are they prepared? Do they have the capacity? Do they have an implementation framework that can work very well at national and sub-regional levels? So right. Very good question. Uh, it has always been a matter of when Nigeria will join, not a matter of if, uh, given the fact that the president did not sign when the initial member signed. And this is an idea that might, you know, Nigeria spearheaded, you know, the thought leadership and the rest of it. So it was a surprise that uh, something that Nigeria championed, you know, Nigeria became one of the last to sign up. So sign, we must. Ready? You can't, you can't wait until you are ready, you know. Nobody is ever ready for this, and it's a collective challenge for them to now prepare themselves to ensure that each person benefits, you know, from the free trade arrangement. Uh, it's a platform, you know, for trade negotiations. It's not as if it's presenting any country, you know, it's... So it's, it opens the door for dialogue, and each country can take time to prepare themselves. Um, if countries should be afraid, I'm not sure it's Nigeria that should be afraid. I mean, Nigeria, the rest of West Africa, for example, uh, Nigeria is uh, bigger than the rest of ECOWAS. You know, Nigeria is more than 50% of ECOWAS, and that's something. So why would it be? afraid of, you know, countries with clearly, you know, and that's true of, of most of the other, you know, regions in Africa. Um, yes, some in the Middle East, um, in North America, could be claimed to have a superior advantage, given their proximity to Europe, uh, they are more advanced in infrastructure. In North America, yes. Yes, North Africa. Uh, in infrastructure and the, and the rest of it, you can mention Algeria, you can mention a few of them. But that is a challenge to the rest of Africa, too, also. You can't say that uh, because someone has progressed, then we should stop this, you know, single market. So you two should look inward and address. So uh, we are talking about trade. To gain the most from trade, you need to address the capacity of the individual states to produce. In other words, trade at the end of the day is about competitiveness. For you to sell an item internationally, you have to be capable of producing them 
at better costs, you know, than elsewhere. And that's something that is a problem for most of Africa. Uh, the absence of uh, rail transportation means that transport costs renders them uncompetitive. It's cheaper to transport goods from the Far East into African coast than it is to transport goods into the hinterland, or conversely, to bring goods from the hinterland is more expensive. And all those will matter, you know, for trade. So the conversation uh, among the African countries should include how to fast track infrastructure development, because that's key for competitiveness and it's key for trade. I wanted to ask you about the recent, was last month, the colloquium that was held by University of Oxford and Cambridge alumni titled, What President Buhari Should Do in His Second Term. So what should he do? What was agreed there, especially with regard to providing economic stimulus? What did you agree? Has it been communicated? To whom? And how was it received? Right. Um, questions about uh, what we agreed, I can answer. The communication, I know, I read the communique, and uh, I'm sure the president would have forwarded it. You know, um, the response, I'll have to ask the president, or you will have to ask the president. Yeah, but a major issue, a major central trend in Nigerian um, economic discourse is, and it affects even this free trade area that we are talking about, infrastructure, poverty, employment, is that Nigeria is preoccupied with the ends that we wish to attain. And we don't give enough thought to where the means with which we will attain them will come from. And so we end up not attaining the ends. A better approach would be to give priority to what means, what must we find for ends to be attained. If you achieve the means, you can take attainment of ends as a foregone conclusion. Do you, think, do you think we're on the right path? The governments over the past few years have put certain structures and policies into place. The ease of doing business plan 2020 would be one of those policies that they've, or documents that the government has tried to push forward as a plan and a solution to certain economic problems. Do you think we have enough, enough depth right now when it comes to really taking the bull by the horn and dealing with our economic state? Because the concern of a lot of citizens is that our economic growth is positioned at about 2.7%. This is below our population growth rate. This is below our double-digit inflation rate. So we're really and truly growing at a deficit. How, how do you think the, cover, the current government is faring in terms of getting us out of this rut? Because it seems as though there's a lot of talk, but the action is harder to see. Right. It comes back, you know, to the same point. Um, you want to see faster growth. You need to address the question of the means. You know, faster growth is an end, you know, and it's about means and ends. So what uh, Nigeria, and not just Nigeria, and other African countries have to learn to do is what, you know, the developing countries in Asia and in Latin America have perfected, is that Nigeria's problem in the past since 2014, it comes down to one problem, and that's the shortage of liquidity. I would acknowledge that the ease of doing business is probably one of the areas where the current government has made the most progress. That's very good. Uh, but unless you get to the bank and there's money in the yes. bank, for you to fund profit opportunities. Business is easier to do in vain, because we won't still get to do the business. Can we hear your thoughts about unlocking liquidity in the short term, which you, you know, delineated in that colloquium? Because, you know, we're running out of time. Yes. You have some ideas. Can we hear those ideas? 
Right. So the central issue is liquidity. It's just like you having an anemic patient. Unless you deal with the, you know, adequacy the of, of the blood, mm. sorry, you know, whatever else you do will be in vain. So Nigeria needs to recognize that we are advantaged. We have a lot of idle resources that we can turn to to unlock liquidity from. This is a post-boom economy. There are assets owned by government lying idle, you Such know, as? across the country. Uh, somebody told me, uh, yes, last week that Night Post, for example, has 2,000 buildings scattered across the country in prime locations, and in next to nothing. It's not just Night Post, you know, you can. We have 235 prisons. You have 2,000 police stations run across. Those property, these are just examples that, you know, all sorts, you know. Would the diversification of the economy recommended again and again also help in any way? You need money to, to fund diversification. At the end of the day, what enables diversification is infrastructure. For example, a nationwide network of rail. And adequate energy supply. Unless Nigeria can put the money down or attract the money, fortunately, the government owns infrastructure, except telecoms. Attract private yes. investors. Mm. They will bring the liquidity, they will bring the know-how. So unless you sit down and address those gaps, and all of them, when you trace it, whether you are talking of jobs, whether you're talking of employment, talking of infrastructure, or trade, or poverty, it comes back to liquidity. The liquidity of the budget of the federal government that the government reaps spending plan for the year and then ends up borrowing half of it. Well, I guess you need liquidity too to lift 100 million <laughs> people out of poverty. Yeah, as absolutely. As it comes down mm -hmm. to that. And so Nigeria should address it that the shortfall in export revenue means it doesn't mean the end of life doesn't mean that everything should collapse well, unfortunately Thank uh, you very much. i don't you know we have to uh, well. you know, cut it off at this point i wish we could have uh, continued thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Sir. Yes.